and neither of you two have much need for hairspray the rest of the time. It would last you a long while. What sort of doctor does knees? Either have to have sawdust in your pockets and half a tree, or you're getting banged up straight away. The thigh power you should be using to crush your rivals is definitely going to be one of those excerpts that Mark uses in the intro. Hello, welcome to this week's Single Track World podcast. I'm Hannah, and today I have with me... Benji. Howarth, middle name James. Bond. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and my other mystery guest is? Is Chips Chippendale, middle name uh, Henry and James. First name not Chip, but anyway, we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do my surname or my middle name. I, oh, I don't well. like my middle name. Oh, what is your middle name? Molly. Well, that's something I didn't know. Yeah, it's all a bit girly-whirly. <laughs> Molly, right, OK. Yeah. <laughs> Just doesn't doesn't feel like it suits me at all. So yeah, and Where actually neither does my surname. So on. oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Anyway, on from our names. We're here to talk about bikes. Um, so let's kind of. start with the the stewing debate that we've been waiting for the three of us to get together for, which is crank lengths. Oh, all right. Yeah. Hard yeah. fought crank lengths. Well, well, probably not. I that. said, I said that I wished that the bike I was riding had shorter cranks, and Chip said, "What? Why would you want that, or something like that?" Yes, and what you wanted what one six fives, one sixties, even one six one... fives would do. But yeah. Right, what? but definitely shorter. Um, and yeah, and Benji went, "Yeah, cause science," and and there. So that I've summarised it, and everyone can just log off, go home, and, and ride bikes now. Well, cr- crank lengths, I don't know. It's a funny one, isn't it? It's, I think um, I can understand the debate if we're in a velodrome <laughs> with no gears and no braking, kind of. But um, leverage comes from your drivetrain, doesn't it? So you do have to change it. If you go down in crank length, it's a good idea to also go down in chain ring, maybe, or up in cassette size. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you've got um, you've got twelve gears to choose from, so I don't think it's partic- and I think I'd rather have the uh, ground clearance. Mm-hmm. It, is that your need for shorter cranks, Hannah? The, is it a ground clearance thing? So it's predominantly a ground clearance thing when it comes to mountain bikes. Yes, I think that the I would I would rather have the ground clearance so I can keep on pedaling and spinning, but there are other kind of ergonomic benefits to be had i think mm-hmm. um because you so you, you when you've got shorter cranks you make smaller circles with yes your feet. so the range of movement that your knee and hip needs to go through is smaller and if you were to imagine taking a really long like extreme crank then the range of movement that you would be putting your in my case, particularly a hip through, would mm. be like <clears throat> like time trial levels of um, like compression, putting your knee up to your chest kind of thing, yeah. And that is bad for my hip and my hip condition that I have. So I think that having sm- shorter cranks, generally reducing the amount of um, movement that my knees and hips need to go through is good as well as not... Now, yeah, now we've got the... Now we've got... Cassettes that are bigger than what did it used to be? The biggest one used to be like thirty two, didn't it? Well, and even before I, that, it was twenty eight. I was thinking that you know maybe my sort of long seated uh, crank length prejudice comes from, um, uh, I guess my you know old school upbringing where in the early days your your lowest gear was was if you were lucky was like twenty four, twenty eight or something, twenty eight on the back. And so you really didn't have that that low gear, and you needed the extra leverage to to just turn the pedals over. And then obviously that then got influenced by my foray into single speeding for ten years, um, where uh, I know that Kona came out with a production bike that had one eighty cranks on. Yeah, um, the, uh, the well, being unit. clipped in's yeah, being clipped in's a bit different as well, isn't it? Because she's already on flat pedals. You got another a lot of what's that called? I don't know. You're wider, aren't you? You got more to whack into the ground because you got little spuds. Although the um, 
possibly deeper than a flat pedal. It's the width of flat pedals. And I think on e-bikes, which is the bike you've been... No, you've not been riding an e-bike, have you? But I've noticed that that wasn't the issue back then, was it? That was a normal one. Um, e-bikes can be a thing, and I think they try and explain it as being... Cause I don't know why, but it's nothing to do with them being lower down or anything like that. I think it's the Q factor. If you look down, you're like John, John Wayne, aren't you, on a lot of e-bikes? Well, um, I think on a lot of e-bikes, very though, you keep pedalling, so you don't you don't do the little half crank quarter crank thing as you go over an obstacle on an e-bike yeah. because you get that disproportionate kind of drop off in speed and momentum because of the weight of the bike and things so yeah. when you're on an e-bike you sit down and you just keep spinning and spinning and spinning even if you're yeah. going up and over technical stuff whereas on a mountain bike you there's a good chance you'd be standing by that point anyway. And yeah. so then you like you kind of put your pedals level and you hop and you skip and you do little quarter cranks and stuff to get up and round and over things because you're not just sitting there spinning those full circles. And so then on an e-bike, you tend to whack your cranks if they're longer because you're doing that full revolution all the time and you're not kind of timing it to the terrain in the same way. So then they've started fitting shorter cranks. Yeah, um, in a lot of instances, and I think that's a sensible move. I don't know what the key factor is actually, but it's just one of those things that they don't talk about on e-bikes. But it's quite significantly wider, I think. There is a chunky, uh, great big motor in the middle, isn't there? So, yeah, yeah. And so. um, but also, they should talk about it because it's like wide key factor is like a reason I prefer wide key factor. While we have to be obsessed with having narrow, narrow key factors. Is, is that or not weirdness reason? Well, weirdness. is that not also a hip um, efficiency thing? That because your your legs or you know your feet are a foot foot apart, I guess at rest. Yeah. Um, the the wider your feet are when you're pedaling, you're pedaling in a triangle, I suppose. It could be. Have... It could be that it could be that we've always had the Q factor has been far too narrow for hundred years. <laughs> it's just because it's, it's just like just because that's what it was. No science has ever got into a bicycle, really. It's always been about paring them down, hasn't it? No, not really. And, but but your, well, I, don't know. I mean, your knee joints particularly are, are designed on. You know, they bend in one direction. They're not like a hip where they move in in all all directions. Um, and so, I guess the the closer you you can have your Q factor to be as wide as your hips are, I guess. Something to know. But then hips are quite wide, so yeah, to know. I've definitely had it on some bikes where I've noticed that the Q factor is too wide and it is really uncomfortable, um, particularly on your knees. And Amanda's had it. In fact, she was writing about it in the members feature that she put up on Saturday, um, where she rode, she took her mountain bike shoes on her gravel riding holiday and the difference in the q factor really aggravated her knees because the the stance in the mountain bike shoes was completely different to on the gravel shoes that she would usually ride well so she has her cleats set wider in the shoe more to the inside of the that and there's not really that much movement in a in an spd not not really there's maybe three or four mil but the shoes are wider, aren't they? Like if you, she, so she had like enduro style mountain bike shoes, which have more shoe on the inside of your toe, if you like, compared to the skinny, grody, gravelly shoes, like a cross country shoe would be, which are, have less on the inside of your toe. So if you then put your cleats in, your enduro ones are sort of further out, your feet are further out. Than they are on a cross country one where you. I'll have to measure in. some I don't know, yeah. some shoe uh, soles and find out because I'd never particularly. Yeah, weird, isn't it? I think it's hard to work out what it does what on that. I can't, I can't fathom <laughs> it. But yeah, but yeah, it's just like SPDs look like. Uh, who's a who? What sort of doctor does knees? Do they have a name? Knee Orthopedic doctor. surgeons, is it? Yeah, look like I imagine the. Not keen on SPDs. Yeah, although you know there are people who run, you know, time pedals and uh, crank brothers similarly for the for the float, and I think the that's possibly overblown because uh, your regular Shimano um, 
PD. It's kind of a Shimano Shimano pedaling dynamic. Anyway, your your regular clip-in pedal from Shimano. Uh, there's there's so much kind of rattle and slack in the system. It's not like a road pedal where you are clipped in and your heels don't move at all because on a on an SPD there is a fair amount of movement because the your your feet can kind of I mean I, I pedal a bit wonky anyway with a lot of weight on the outside of my foot and I have no problems with SPDs just because there's that much rattle in them that your foot sort of finds its natural position. But I imagine it depends right- what you how yeah, it depends how your feet move and your ankles move and stuff, doesn't it? Like hmm. you see some people pedaling and and they have w- really weird like like a kick in their knee or a kick in their heel yeah, or something. Rubbing think, paint what? off the yeah. top tube. Yeah, like how the hell are these people not having their knees and joints replaced you know, every hundred miles with a with a gait like that? And yet, it seems to work for them. Like, yeah, the biomechanics are all different and personal. So, um, yeah, so it probably depends quite what weirdness you've got in your ankles and your knees as to which cleats or flats or whatever work for you. Like, I absolutely cannot clip out sideways my heels do not move in that direction so you have to clip out inwards inwards yeah i can't go outwards mm. just just can't yeah you, know, you can sit me on a turbo trainer if you like and i cannot get my feet out that way unless you're <laughs> which is very inconvenient if you want to put an emergency foot down <laughs> can't remember i do have some clip shoes in the garage as emergency should i ever need them uh, uh, what would know. be a, a clip pedal emergency? <laughs> oh, uh, I need to I sprint think... somewhere. Yeah, I don't know really. Hill if climb you had to ride competition, a road bike. touring bike maybe. Uh, but then probably not even then. I just don't think there's enough in it. I just like yeah, like normal well, shoes. Whereas I, I have the opposite problem. I, I, my feet physically don't work well with flat pedals um, because I've. Because my my knees bend inwards. If I've if I've got my feet parallel, my knees bend inwards when I sort of crouch, and so it means that if I'm pedaling with my knees parallel, I've got loads of weight on the outside of my feet edges, and that doesn't work in flat pedals because there isn't that sort of rattle and slack that I get from clipping in, ironically. So the freedom of flat pedals means that just all the weight goes on the on my little toe edge of my foot. And I end up with massive cramp. So uh, much as I'd love to be a sort of you know rad flat pedal uh, throw rider, uh, I don't think it would actually work ergonomically for me. And I've had physios kind of look at my knees and go, "Well, that's just how they bend. You know, we we can't we, we're not going to fix them because as you, you know you you cope fine, so don't touch it." Mm. So so we've strayed from. From crank, crank length to into to Q factor to to pedals. It's not one of my reviews, but we've got a review of Hope cranks that are really short. Uh, I think it might have even been submitted a couple of days ago. Ooh, uh, cool. So I'd have to see what that that will be. Uh, might be out soon, probably. Right. Well, they like one. But I think they're one five five. I think. Wow. Yeah. One five five. So so the 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 other thing that we haven't talked about is. The, the crank length that suits you probably in proportion to your legs in some respect so again if you if you thought like in extremes and took your legs and then took a you know uh let's say a 50 centimeter crank length well that's going to come halfway up your leg and so then you're going to have to pedal like really extreme size circles but but if, if you, you do have uh, massive a, legs, if you have a massive legs, like you're a basketball player or something, then that's going to come up to your shin, isn't it? Instead of your knee, and so the the proportion um, of what somebody can tolerate in terms of like the the range of movement that someone's going to have to create is different um, depending you, on how yeah. tall you are. You notice it when you're uh, on kids' bikes, don't you? Because mm. my uh, daughter's just gone up to her next hand-me-down bike from a bigger brother and the crank length's longer and it's she's like doing whirr, like kneeing herself in the not really but kneeing herself in the chin and then going all the way down on point mm-hmm. just to get around the cranks and that's what she finds 
quite tricky to get your saddle height right then because it's like it's too high and too low at the same time. Yeah. So that's oh. another thing you really know. It's like you you probably need a longer dropper post. That's the issue. I'm having going size. even shorter. Yeah, is my saddle height goes. Uh, if you go from to like one sixties. You, when your saddle's at full height, it's all right, but you, you just feel a bit high and yeah. you have to put your seat post up 10 mil, whatever it is. I, um, out, out of interest, to, to either of you have a the the figure of your saddle height or your bottom bracket to... No. You just do, do it by... I, I used to do it by eye um, because, you know, hardtails or short travel suspension yeah. bikes, it would be sort of hip height. Yeah. And then, then you get on a six inch travel bike and it's nowhere near and you adjust it. So I I finally got round to, to going, Okay, I've I've measured bottom bracket to saddle top. Obviously crank length then comes into it. And I suppose it's sh- I should really measure my, you know, pedal to saddle yeah. height. But it's yeah. easier just to do bottom bracket. Um and, I have and done, but I can't it remember it. Yeah. Yeah, I can't, can't remember, remember it either. And I no. I have been asked that actually when Yeah. It's it's more of a, a gravel bike or a road bike thing where where you're going to be sat in the same position for four hours, and I guess that's also an argument for road bike journalists all turning up with tape measures and three different stems when they go and test bikes because their argument was you you clip in, you don't move for four hours because you're doing a road mm. ride, and then you unclip, and if that position isn't right, then you're in trouble. Yeah. Whereas mm. on a mountain bike, you're always moving around. But yeah. I have, have been asked for my my, my um, saddle height uh, yeah. at, at, at bike launches before. Yeah. Yeah, I have two, and I've run out to the garage and measured one that I know <laughs> is currently set up comfortably. I can't remember. Yeah. But, but I quite often find that I want it set slightly lower when I set off as well, and then I want to put it up a little I mean, bit as a kind of warm up in, and yes. stretch out. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had that where stretch I've, out. I've hopped onto my bike and gone, oh, has someone else been riding my bike? This saddle's far too high, and I've put put the dropper down ten mil, mm. and then by the end of the ride, it's like, oh no, this is perfect. Yeah. So, so the other thing um, that the crank length stuff uh, comes into is uh, because your legs are moving this more extreme or bigger circles. Uh, if you've got a longer crank length, um, Isla of Isla Bikes has done quite a lot of looking at that, particularly from a women's perspective, because. She reckons that it, you you're basically creating more flap mash because you're moving around more. Um, so yeah, if you're particularly uncomfortable on your saddle, you might want to look at shorter crank lengths. And I guess women are often on the shorter end, and so are maybe more likely to have a crank that is disproportionately long to them as well, if the bikes haven't come that well sized. Hmm. It's quite an. Ex- uh, an- an expensive swap isn't it and there's there's not really much you can do about it there's no kind of cheat you can do where you get shorter pedals or or anything it's you can no. get kiddie cranks can't you well yeah, for, yeah. for tandems yes well, you well, can they... get adjustable cranks then yeah that would be that would be somewhat clunky and you probably would catch even more by way of yeah because uh, your cranks like would be ruts. the same length you just yeah, yeah have, have the holes <laughs> further up the crank <laughs> I've had uh, certain bikes, suspension bikes with uh, funny seat tubes, like compromised seat tubes, and I've had to, not had to, but I've opted to run certain fat pedals and the uh, brothel creeper st- style five tens impact to me. Oh yes, to make up the the difference. Right. So it's not it's not as reachy. So I kind of put Shimano XT flat pedals on. And then some impact five tens, and it gives you another another inch know, for... fifteen mil. It's quite surprising, really. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, the, you know, there's an argument for uh, changing your uh, your saddle height depending on what shoes you're wearing, whether they're carbon sole or whether they're they're thicker ones, and whether you've yeah. got I, uh, a I newer. Have a delivery. Oh, very nice. Excuse me. If you have Who's a newer. That, um, Benji's run off. Oh, he's he's disappeared. Locked in it, hang on. Always oh, high security. Oh. Benji Towers. Hello there. Yeah. <laughs> this is delivery. A live live delivery on air. Oh, what can it be? We can do it. An... This is like Fresh Hello, Goods Friday. Cheers, Dad. Live. Oh, Only kind of 
We can do an unboxing where you can't see what's in the box. <laughs> Just an ASMR. <laughs> yes, that's it. Okay. Was, yeah. was that a good looking box? No, I wasn't even delivery. It was someone asking about window cleaning. Ah, okay. Oh. No, mainly because I think we'll go through the decking at the back and then we'll be sued. <laughs> <laughs> at the moment, it's quite crumbly. Ah, yes. Anyway. That is there's decking's a, a, the... <laughs> role in life, isn't it, to go crumbly? Yeah. There's a live unboxing going on outside my house at the minute. Oh, yes. A, a, a live bike building. Oh. Yes. Should, I don't know. What I don't is it? Know. Well, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say because... I'm not sure. Far as you're a free rider, is is Has he now... bought some? Ah, uh, uh, yes, your your extreme downhill um, uh, um, fiance. Uh, <laughs> it's more not so much. Well, he's somewhat downhill, but it's more like tricks and jumps and free riding. X ups and uh, yeah, but breaking flips, wheels. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he might he might be out in my garden building an e gravel bike at the moment. <laughs> Not, he's gone all the way. <laughs> he's gone gone completely to the dark, the dark, dark side. Something Which one is it? Do you know? Is it? It's Ken. It's oh right, yeah, it's been on that. I've been riding a bit yeah. of that while we're away. It's quite a small the one we've got, but uh, yeah, we've all been on that. Yeah. Ted's favourite bike. And there we go. Yeah. Now, so well, this is this is his transport. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, he, he can't drive in this country much. So. Because of the the convictions, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, the licensing and the like insurance and stuff is a pain in the bum. Right. Yes. So, I've, so I've just we sent my we have British driver's license off to be swapped. To be swapped to be like looked at mm. disapprovingly. Yeah. Um. No. So he. Yeah. We have a a e cargo bike between us that is always in demand for transport up and down the valley and um he broke the road bike that he was chasing me on when i was on the cargo bike so okay he's now got his own electrical oh. conveyance yeah e-gravel bikes i'm not entirely sure on them because surely the natural speed of a road or gravel bike is is a bit more than the 18 miles an hour or whatever you're limited to on a yeah, but then go up a hill in Calderdale and there's quite a lot then. I assume it's laden is the idea, isn't it? I wouldn't ride one that isn't weighed down. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff already, I, I assume. But I don't know. That's what we've been doing. We've been. I sp- um, suppose not everyone's loading. in a hurry as well. Okay. Not everyone yeah. needs, needs to do 20 miles an hour to... Uh, it's very to good. The uh, I, I rode it, mate, I just logged a cycle route for a bit in the evening to give it a go. Uh, that must have been quite a sight because it's like an extra small, isn't it? The one that you've is, got yeah. on test. It is. <laughs> just felt like it's just lethal, aren't they? Um, really small and oh my god, you got the stem and then you've got to go even further forward. It's like you're riding a drop bar BMX <laughs> for you, <Yes>. you surely. <laughs> yeah, it was alright. Well, uh, t- when you get when you get beyond the assistance level, I could not really tell that was pretty good. Yeah, they are. Uh, it's not like you're you're sort of doing regen braking all of a sudden once no. you get beyond. I think with the modern motors, they've they've realised that people want to actually pedal faster than the bike will let them. Fazua. Without Fazua. yes, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I think also like so the e gravel bike thing like round here, you probably if you're on the canal, you're probably not whizzing along at twenty miles an hour anyway because there's too many ducks and dog shit in the way and that sort of thing um so it's not the same as being on the road and then on the road there's so many potholes and so many hills you're probably not cruising along at 20 miles an hour either um so yeah i think it'll be a a yeah i would imagine once you're trundling along there's a lot to be said for momentum isn't it so like the extra weight um might be quite good it's not that heavy on its own like yeah then you can take the battery out if you really wanted to does anyone actually do that? I did see somebody doing that up Crag Vale on a training ride on a Put it in his bag. road bike. <laughs> well, yeah, what the battery? Battery yeah. in your bag, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's the first time I've seen anyone doing it. I guess if you've got one. You could one do bike. if you had one on charge. I'm just thinking I've just come from campsite. So you could leave it on charge and ride it to the 
go to the shops lease or the garage or the pub mm. or something that'd be all right um but yeah good so mm. Okay. Anyway. Apart from, I don't know, the, the got a slightly bent disc brake and really small rotors are very hard to get straight. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm really having small. an issue with a gravel bike and and uh, some adjustable spanners Yeah, uh, trying to straighten a disc rotor. You need... Campagnolo, yeah. Oh, have you got the Campag? Yeah, I haven't, yeah, I haven't ridden yeah. this Campag e-car. e-car business, yeah. I've, I've got a review that I'm working on at the moment, which is uh, the Farah gravel bike that I had. Which had e car, thirteen right. speed Fine. Campag, yeah. which um, which has the best brakes of I think any bike right. I own. The the brakes are astoundingly good. Yeah, they were good. Well, that's they, good. Yeah, and into here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I couldn't work out. I didn't. I don't know. If, I couldn't work out how the clutch worked at the back, as in how to disengage it or anything like that. But and unclutch need it. To remember. I don't know. Um, it was all right. It's not like it's mega tight, but it's a bit hard to get the wheel back in. Uh, drifting briefly into the road world, I don't suppose anyone saw the uh, final stage, penultimate stage of the Giro d'Italia. Did Not they... live, kind of. Is that the one it. where they got lost? No, um, basically, Garen Thomas was in pink. Uh, spoiler alert, um, but it was weeks ago, so you don't know if you don't okay. know who won anyway. Uh, and there was Roglic and Garen Thomas, and they were 20 seconds apart, and there was this mountain time trial and don't worry there is mountain bike content here uh kind of and it was sort of rolling and they're all on time trial bikes and then there was a just this massive kind of concrete track that went up to a don't know satellite dish or something at the top and they were allowed to swap bikes uh so you did the first half on your time trial bike and then you hopped off that and then you hopped onto your hill climbing bike so people went to to like super light um hill climbing bikes and some people garrett tom swapped his helmet as well from his time trial helmet to his normal helmet um and primos roglic uh sponsored by sram he controversially swapped to a bike that had a a gravel cassette on so it had a, a 10 to 44 cassette instead of the usual you know 10 to 30 maybe on a road bike i don't know what they they run um, and that was kind of his secret weapon because the this climb was really steep and it had twenty percent pitches on it. But there was one bit where he was pedaling up, spinning away, and he went over like a water bar, and his chain fell off oh. because I reckon they got a gravel cassette, but he was just running a road mech without a clutch, mm. and uh, so then he had to stop and um, and re reinstall his chain. And somewhere in SRAM, all the engineers were going, but no, it's a system. The, 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 it yes. works together. No. Yeah, so, so I think, you know, if you're, if you're going to adopt some controversial new tech, then uh, then go all the way and make sure you've got all the bits, not just... Uh, um, anyway, sorry, that was a yeah. bit of a uh, mm. system system thing. Um, but... Uh, he, he oh, still won because yeah. he was that much. Oh, he quicker. did still win. He did still win. Right. Right. Uh, it's like road racing. It's kind of like it's not the Formula One of cycling, is it? It's like the caterer enthusiasts. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like no. cl- it's it's sort of classic <laughs> rallying in the yeah. well. You know, this is what we used in the sixties and stuff, and yeah. and it took a long time for disc brakes to get um, adopted. And yeah. I uh, I had heard that that one of the reason that oh that's where we came from was Campag. Um, one of the reasons that they, Campag, were very slow to develop disc brakes, and there would be situations where you'd have the peloton in the wet, and there would be a crash or some inc- incident, and two thirds of the peloton, the ones with the Shimano and SRAM disc brakes, would slow down quickly, and all the Campag riders would then plow into the back of the uh, <laughs> of the other riders because they couldn't slow down quite as quick, and so uh, yeah. Campag were like, "Oh, all right, we'll do disc brakes and." You know, it's, <laughs> it's not what Fausto Copy would have wanted, but uh, yeah, all right then. Um, but but one of the 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 sticking points with the road riders adopting discs was there was this great fear that they were going to amputate fingers uh, because mm. yeah, there there was well we we all crash all the time uh, on our road bikes and we don't want to stick our fingers into disc brakes and lose our our fingertips, yeah. which. 
I don't think I've ever seen... Nothing, there's nothing round and metal spinning around on a bike already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fine. But flat-bladed spokes, then, Ooh. by that count. Surely, exactly, surely those yeah. should be oh, yeah. banned. Outlawed, <laughs> yes. Worried about our fingers. Yeah. So, well, yeah, it's how it's much a... racing... This is the same as down as well. How much uh, racing uh, isn't up for adopting new stuff is, is like... Like racing develops the sport. It doesn't. It does in some degree. But then, if you left it to like Greg Minard, would still be on his orange, wouldn't he? Yes. So it works. I'm not changing anything. Just sticking and, with this. And, you know, but I'd be the same. Right. I don't know what I'm doing. They don't and, really want to change anything. And that's the issue with with good racers is that they can make anything go fast. Yeah. I was talking to one of the engineers at Fox, and he was saying that. The, the top 10 downhillers, they they just run whatever they run. Um, the people who help them develop better products are the guys who guys and, and women who are, you know, 12th to 25th. They're the ones who, who go, right, I need, where can I get four seconds back on this course? Um, maybe I haven't got the talent or the bravery or, or whatever to, to do that. I want every single technological advance I can get. So they're the ones who are you know, clipping tire treads and and uh, trying experimental fork setups because they they're the ones who want to risk maybe not doing as well. Which is the the issue that the racers have got is my setup works fine. I won the last race. Why do I want to change anything? Um, and you've got those the sort of baying hordes of the the tenth to twentieth who who want any advantage they can get who will try experimental. You know, not running a peak. Or uh, running slick tires or whatever. Mm. Anyway, okay. So, chips. Uh, what's caught your eye over the last week or so on on the bike news front? Oh my god. Um, uh, I must admit, I've been completely distracted by searching for new trail tools. Uh, oh. It um, because uh, I'm I'm a massive fan of the uh, the BTR trail rake. Which I've, mm-hmm. I've been using a lot, um, but I've, I've gone down the rabbit hole of massive folding saws, which okay. uh, um, uh, there's the silky katana or katana boy maybe, which is a uh, it's a folding saw that it costs like two hundred and seventy quid, and it's got mm-hmm. a, a fifty centimeter blade, uh, and it's a folding basically it's a meter long pen knife. It's uh, it's quite impressive. Um, it's probably legal in France, but not in the UK. I, I think it's one of those you you either have to have sawdust in your pockets and half a tree, <laughs> or or it's yeah, or or you're getting banged up straight away. So, but you're um, going for the the folding saw option rather than the pocket chainsaw type option with with like two I, handles and a chain in between. I think they are. Uh, prone to sort of cheap knockoff uh so you can get. I mean, I have one of those, and and it's all right. But the only one you want is is probably a real chainsaw chain that's properly sharpened that someone's just welded two handles on the end of. Because I think okay. the sort of you know the nineteen pounds from Amazon is uh, um, is is kind of prone to failure on the first go. A bit like the cheap folding spades yeah um, no i was so, thinking more along i think nord is, is it nordic that lie on outdoor do i think yeah i think a posh chainsaw in a pocket yeah mm. i think a posh posh one is is definitely worth it but like anything you know the the cheap folding i i bought a cheap folding spade from amazon and it it broke the first time i i used it having lugged it up a hill for 45 minutes or something it went tink and the handle fell off oh. so uh Yes, so now I've got a, a Glock folding spade, which is very good. <laughs> Glock. Yeah. So well, uh, my folding spade is about it a long time. I think it's Swedish Army or something. Yeah. It's been going a few years. Yes. If you're not worried about weight, and that that's yeah. the great thing about e-bikes is just being able to take a massive rucksack full of clunking tools up up to a trailhead and uh, do some trail maintenance, um, which. Uh, I was thinking no one ever actually, no one's ever complained about trail maintenance. I think trail building people complain about, 
especially if it's not your wood or whatever. But mm. um, I think if someone finds you clipping back some of the, the hawthorns, they won't go, what are you doing here? Those hawthorns have a right to you know, yeah. clog across the trail at neck height. Um, so so I think active, maybe aggressive trail maintenance is, is, is uh, allowed. Well, I am on the, uh, as of this morning, actually, I'm on the, going to go and do some uh, hand guard pseudo shopping because... Uh, oh, like brush knuckles, guards. Yeah. Yeah. My knuckles the, the, have a hard life the things <laughs> from now you, until August. Yes. I've I've looked with sort of puzzlement at sort of Nico Villas' bike and, and things, and then you go, actually, they're a really good idea. Not having to kind of mash your knuckles through saplings and nettles it's ferns isn't it ferns and bloody uh brambles are horrible anyway, but ferns and stingers you got to yeah. uh, get rid of them if you can have some that are easy on easy off that's what i'm looking for yes already, so i've already asked someone who was i've already asked the distributor for I've done this a lot recently i've asked them for something they don't do that i've, that I've com- confused them with someone else I've confused Amy, <laughs> AVS with AMS or something. So there we go. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay. Are they now going to make some? Just for you. Idea. I don't know. Is it send hit? They're probably going to, or uh, someone else does them. Right. I don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so the latest, I, I think I predicted the return of handguards in one of my New Year's predictions I, a couple of years ago. I'm yes. usually two years in advance, actually. So right. I should go back in time. We'll watch carefully yeah. this this Christmas. See what's coming out in twenty twenty five. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I also I, think they might be quite good in winter for uh, warmth. Wind chill. Yeah. You have some really big ones then, though. Well, it's interest. Well, that's kind of the pseudo things, isn't it? You get big hand guards. It can only help. But I, well, I know what the are easy on and off because they need to go on different bikes every five minutes. Uh, it's not really a, a real world uh, request. Oh, something I did get this week is, uh, and I know Benji's a fan, is uh, some some push on grips, some yes. non lock on <clears throat> um, ODI attack grips, which are which are fab. They've they've I've always had a soft spot for them since they were Tomac attack grips. And uh, have you put them on? Have you installed yep, them? No. I've installed them. Um, my I tend to have a squirt of brake cleaner inside the grip and slide them on um and uh my yeah, only stuck since uh uh bike mag r.i.p uh ryan was it he did a tip of uh, uh stopping them tape, to, was it? yeah which i couldn't really understand when you read it when you hear it. Well, parcel tape what does that mean you go like that you put a layer of parcel tape on your handlebars before you start and that gives you a, a totally un in yeah, fairly unengressible layer for them to go in. Right. It's the shot peening on alloy bars that the water gets in. Yeah, which is like then, a then, micro then sort of golf ball surface that the uh, yeah. That so they if you've got carbons, strength. you're fine. So push ons on carbons, fine. And then you, but if you got like normal, fairly shot peening alloy handlebars, you get water ingress and they start spinning. Yes. So layer of parcel tape underneath, and then put them on with. Yeah, I'd use disc brake cleaner. Yeah. Okay, because there was a sort of oh, you know, put them on with hairspray and things, but it just leaves so, uh, sticky mess everywhere. Spray mount. Well, yeah, um, just and, that, the and neither there. of you two have much need for hairspray the rest of the time. It would last you a long while. That's just offensive. <laughs> well, no, good because I've gone back on because I've ridden squidgy like push-ons that are like not massive um, from uh, Gusset. I think they are all yeah. good. And then uh, gone back on particularly egregious grips from like Canyon or something like that. They're just like awful. Like the massive, massive lock ons and rock hard. Yes, I've complained about those in every review. <laughs> and yeah. I told and I told the designer I was going to continue to complain about them. <laughs> it's horrible. But other people as well, like the just what did only about that's what we're doing in the issue now. Is uh, the the ones that came on the high bike were the same, so yeah, rock hard and massive. Oh yeah, yeah. Good. And the the difference between a massive grip and a thin grip is about two mil. Mm. I think you know someone at QBP once measured all of their grips with a you know micrometer, and and it was 
you know, the skinny ones were 31 mil and the yeah. ultra fat ones were 33 and a half or something. Um, there's not much in it, but because I guess because we're talking diameters and circumferences and all that, the, there's a bigger difference in your hand yeah. feel. So if you get the uh, Renthals like Laurie Greenland, I mean, I see Laurie Greenland win some at this mm. season. Um, he always uses Renthal push ons. Yeah. And they're skinny and push ons. So they're probably like 28 mil. Right. Are they the super really skinny? Dink. They can I was going to say, yeah. are they the ones that are like petting a slug? The, the, they're so yes, she those, uses. Yeah. Those, um, uh, they do all loads. Squishy, was it an octopus you used to get as a toy? Yes. In, in the 70s, we'd throw yeah. it on a window and it would walk its yeah, way it down do the window. Those, yeah. yeah. So it pleasant. fell to the carpet and then got covered in dog hair. And then covered in fluff, yeah. And then you yeah. had to clean it with washing up liquid. Yeah. So yes, that's reminded me. Dog hair. I, I went <laughs> to see my dad last last week. Yes, and he had a surprise dog. Wow, he's got himself a dog without telling me, and and I don't really like dogs, as you know, Chips. But yeah, but this is a nice dog. Oh, okay. it's very small. It's because it's a puppy, I suppose. But uh, I think I might put it in Fresh Goods Friday because it was. I think you should. Yes, dog. I think yeah, animal it was There we go. <laughs> So I have no bike news this week because I've been on holiday, uh, playing with playing with a small dog, and very um, good. yeah, and taking four bikes up to the very far north of Scotland. We didn't actually do the Cape Roth Challenge, but we did ride to Sandwood Bay and stuff. Oh, like that. Oh, you did ride. Oh, that's right. Then. Yeah, with the kids, which was nice because my kids are quite good on bikes, even though they don't realise it. You know, you're you going just be careful of the big rocky steps or something, oh, and yeah, you're already so down like, the well, other side. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah. 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 Come on, catch like, up. Oh, they've already done it. They've jumped every water bar. Yeah, fine. So that was yes. cool. Um, yeah. And a uh, hot tip for all the potential holiday makers listening in their fancy VW vans with pop up tops. The mesh in a VW van is bigger than the Scottish midge. So, how did so you deal go... with that then? <laughs> My did kids just... slept in the top. <laughs> oh, in long sleeve tops. <laughs> with, with hoodies on and we went we went somewhere Ski windy goggles. enough to not have <laughs> not to not have midges oh. yeah wow yeah so um is there anything else what benji were you at work no you were off i was, oh, off, I was in for uh, monday tuesday uh, no okay. monday was bank holiday wasn't it so just for tuesday mm. oh well did. this is just like the total downtime bank holiday week off well, edition there's nothing yeah, professional about it, this just, podcast at all passed it all to amanda to do Yes, I've, I've just been reading her review of the uh, of the uh, Reverb Axis seat post, which is on the yes. site at the moment, which is yeah. very good, and I have to agree with with her. I think it's despite its eye watering cost, it's a fantastic product because it, uh, I think, even more so than electric gears, because electric gears, ergonomically, you're still sort of moving your thumb and you're pressing a, you know, you're clicking a mouse. Um, mm. instead of doing a sort of ballpoint pen clicker on your, you know, on your SRAM gears or whatever. Um, but I think the the dropper post, because on a physical, uh, you know, mechanical dropper post, you have to move your thumb a fair way and it's quite a big movement, um, usually at a time yeah. of peril where you're like, oh, mm. I need the saddle out of the way now. And, and I think just the ergonomics of having a, a mouse click dropper post is really good because you end up using it so much mm. you know down down 20 mil up 30 mil down you know 100 mil all the way down yeah. all the way up and and it works very very well and and you you don't realize how much you use it until you go back to a mechanical dropper and yeah. uh uh you know and you've got that big throw of the thumb lever and then you're like oh i can't be bothered to you know, move my saddle up an inch for for the sake of this next section, but I'll so I'll just live with it. Um, and it's sort of possibly vaguely justifiable if you have two bikes with the same size seat post size, yeah. where you can just pull it out of one and put it in the other. Um, I think that's a, a tenuous justification, but I think if you can afford it, it's definitely. Um, I would rather have that than electric gears if I had to pick one or the other. Discuss. There you go. Maybe. <laughs> Don't want to open no, I've up had. Uh, oh, I always think about e-bikes. We've got loads of e-bikes at the moment, and there's two that have. Um, uh, you have because it's quite a circuitous route for the cable to go, probably, 
around mm. the motor and around the battery and blah de blah. Uh, and they're quite low endish droppers. You get sore thumb very quickly. Yes. <laughs> or two of them at the moment. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, good. Oh, well, they're going to be uh, another. Uh, Magura having another go, aren't they? I think they'll be a revised ah. Veyron soon. Veyron, yeah. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, that, so... I don't know whether it's going to go down at the push of a button. That's what they used to do, didn't it, ages ago? You could lower it without sitting on it. Really? Oh. Yeah, the very the Mark One was, because that was the weird thing about the whole delay. It was like, got, and then would, <laughs> someone's operating a portcullis somewhere. Like, <laughs> yes. Going down. No, I'm on it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. But yeah, it's good to get some rivals. And I think uh, uh, Transex doing one I noticed in some. Oh, yes. So it's a Eurobike uh, soon, isn't it? Isn't that soon? Yep. Is that Eurobike June? Soon. Yeah. It is in two, three weeks. Two and a oh. half weeks. Cool. So yeah. I'll, there'll be a I'll few be... more wireless things coming out. Yes. I think, that's, I think people have gone for it. Enough people have gone for the idea. So I think we'll see more of it. I, a couple of years ago, I did see uh, um, dropper posts which were wired to an e-bike battery. So they they oh. were electric, um, but wired, but electric. So yeah. that, that kind of made made a reasonable amount of sense if you've got, got that sort of plumbing anyway in your bike. So, and did yeah. BMC have, not have some sort of... <gasps> Yes. Like oh, yeah. a dropper post mm-hmm. shock the, the was the thing. Post. Like it was like all... Yeah, all mounted in together, like go into downhill mode and or uphill mode. Oh, I can't find yes, that they, right. to lock out and Yeah, things. so it's a <clears throat> single lever kind of uh drop to your saddle but only eighty mil maybe, um and unlocked your shocks because you were obviously descending. And the, the argument for it only being an eighty mil drop is if you had a hundred and fifty mil drop, then you to get it to go down, you physically have to sit on the saddle and push it down. So you're then doing a squat back to get back up to riding height, and so that's thigh power you could be using for crushing your rivals. And so if okay. you're dropping your saddle, whatever fifty times a lap, mm. or twenty times a lap, you're you're doing twenty squats when really you should be using that energy to to um win thigh power you should be using to crush your rivals is definitely mm. going to be one of those excerpts that mark <laughs> uses in the intro <laughs> yes i i think so along with road racing being caterham racing a classic <laughs> rallying of the uh bicycle world so, ah, yes well does that neatly bring us to the end <laughs> I, <laughs> now I, that we've given mark the beginning I think so, and and uh, yeah. coincidentally, Mark is actually staying uh, with me this week. So make sure he has a bloody nice holiday. <laughs> he's he's been uh, been enjoying himself so far. So uh, there's been food and drink and sunshine, and Good. maybe later bicycles. Excellent. Cool. So yeah, make sure he doesn't chop anything off with one of your massive saws. Okay, or a disc rotor or something. Yeah. spokes. Yeah, watch out. It's very dangerous this uh, bike riding, although. My, I don't know if you can see my little Ooh. scuff. It won't show on, no, a, I can on see the that. radio. Um, yeah. yeah, I am. Um, I was climbing out of a tree, having picked cherries. So that's oh. far more dangerous. That's the worst yeah. injury I've had all year. Uh, so yeah, be careful of trees. Okay, so I I have no injuries from my holiday. I am pleased to report the tick mm-hmm. that I For got once. came out without leaving Hole. any horrible. Yeah. Things behind, yeah. I've got a bit of sunburn from Wales, which is amazing. Oh, I've got sunburn, yeah. Yeah. It's not stopping either, is it? It Keeps on going. We look at the weather. Yeah, and now we're sunburned. We can't go out in it until until we stop being (laughs) tomatoes. Yeah. Okay. All All right. Thank you, you two, for joining me here today. Thank you, people, for listening in to the uh, slightly random. We've all been on holiday edition. And uh, we look back to forward to no. Well, God, we look sideways. Look, looking <laughs> long, yes. <laughs> to look to, forward to, to getting back uh, to some kind of like rigorous professionalism. As if. <laughs> <laughs> Why start now? <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.